Hello, hello, hello. How are you guys doing this evening? It is currently, let's see, 6.58 p.m. and I just woke up from a very deep nap. And I must have been like sleeping like this because when I woke up there was like this red spot. I don't know if you can still see it or not, but there was like this red spot on my cheek. I took Boo Radley out and stuff. Um, so it's been a couple minutes since I, it's probably been like 10 minutes since I woke up now. Can you tell that I just woke up? I'm like half asleep still. But anyway, I must have sleep, slept like this because when I woke up I had this like big red spot like on my cheek. But anyway, um, I, passed out and was asleep for, oh my gosh, like I went to sleep at, well, Alex was laying in bed and I went upstairs at about four o'clock and I set my alarm for five because I was going to get up and I was going to vlog. So Alex went to Pitbull tonight with a bunch of people that he works with and his brother Carlos and Liana and stuff asked me to go, but um, well, first of all, I just wasn't really feeling it. I like Pitbull, um, and I'm a Pitbull fan, but I just really wasn't feeling it. And, um, I also didn't know if a lot of the walking around, and they were, they had lawn seats, so I didn't know, like, you know, if they were all standing, and if I wanted to sit, what that would be like. So, um, but he had an extra ticket, and so he was like, if you want it, I got an extra ticket, but I didn't go. So anyway, I was like, I just want to relax, and watch some TV and stuff. Little did I know that I would be so tired that all I would want to do is sleep tonight. Um, but I ended up laying down and then Alex got up and he took a shower and he got ready to go to the concert and then he like kissed me goodbye and said goodbye. And I, I just woke up now and I like looked at the clock and I hadn't posted my drama video that I filmed earlier. I hadn't posted my Peter Rismus video that I filmed earlier because I assumed I would get up at five o'clock, right? And I looked at the clock and it was like six, well, yeah, I must have gotten up just like 10 minutes ago because it was like 647 or 643 or something like that. And I was like, oh my God, like I slept so late. Like what is going on? And I was sleeping so deep and I was having like this really intense dream. And, um, so anyway, that actually had, like, all these different YouTubers in it. It was really weird. But, um, but we were interacting not like we were YouTubers. We were interacting in a completely different way. So it was so bizarre. But anyway, yeah, I woke up and I had these, like, I was sleeping deep, like, deep, deep, deep. Do you ever wake up and you're like, oh my god, like, I was sleeping super deep. So I'm hoping that vlogging will kind of wake me up a little bit because I like to watch some TV shows and things like that. Caroline today told me about a new show on Hulu called The Patient. And um, then I also want to watch Black Summer because last night I didn't watch any shows. I went to bed last night. Well, Alex and I watched two shows last night. We um, were just sitting there. I don't remember what did I have to eat for dinner last night. Did I have anything for dinner last night? Um, what was, what did we do? No, I don't, what did I do? Oh, I, leftovers. So we had leftovers and um, I was like, do you want to watch a movie or something? We didn't have any TV shows to watch, no Real Housewives to catch up on. So Alex was like, well, do you want to watch one of the Real House, or Real Housewives, one of the American Horror Stories? And I haven't watched either season of that, uh, of these. We're on the second season of this. So, they're like each individual, I don't know how many there are in a series, like I think like eight or something like that, um, but each episode is a completely unrelated story. So, it's kind of like Twilight Zone a little bit is what it reminds me of. So, I was like, sure, let's watch one. And he had already watched the first one of season two, so I think we watched, I think it was the second one. It was called Aura, and Aura was like those things, those blank things. Hey, how are you? Hi. Um, Was like those those door cam things and it was so scary you guys like I was so freaked out watching it and so we got done with that that was really fun watching that even though it was super scary um so then we watched the next one that was with Bella Thorne I'm not a huge Bella Thorne fan in fact while I was watching it I was like is Bella Thorne known for anything other than being, like, a notoriously bad actress? Like, she's just not really that good at anything that she's in. And I know that people think she's hot and whatever. I don't... She's okay to me. Um, but she was in this next episode that we watched, which I don't remember what it was called, but it was about this husband and wife. I'm trying to, like, not spoil anything for you. Um, so anyway, it was about this husband and wife that were in this open marriage. 
and they like, but they shared this one thing, and anyway, so that's like all within like the first two seconds of the show, so I'm not ruining it for you, but um, we watched that one, I didn't like that one as well, it was, it was just okay, it kind of reminded me of something else, like a movie that I had recently seen. And then Alex, I was like, let's watch another one. And Alex was like, um, it's midnight and I have to go to bed. So I was like, okay. So it was like, actually, it was like 20 till midnight. So I went upstairs and I was like, I'm just going to lay down for like a half an hour. And then I'm going to get up, you know, at like 12.15. And I'm going to go watch. I'm going to watch Black Summer. And um, so I laid there and I fell asleep and I woke up and it was like 1.30 in the morning. I actually put ice in here and got ice water earlier when I got home from my doctor's appointment when I was sitting down here calling people. And um, it's melted and I just left the cup out here, so that's what I'm drinking right now. But anyway, I woke up at 1.30 and I had like a great dream and I just was like, ah, oh, I felt so comfortable and cozy. So I was like, I'm just gonna stay in bed and I'm not gonna watch TV or anything tonight. So I actually just did like my prayers and meditations like right there. And, um, then I went back to sleep, and then I woke up at, like, th I kept on waking up, like, throughout the night. Like, every, like, kind of, like, hour and a half on the hour and a half, I woke up, and each time it was weird. It was like I had a really good dream that I could only kind of remember bits and pieces of, but I just, I felt, like, really good each time that I woke up. So, finally, um... At, like, five after eight, I woke up, and I was, like, just laying there in bed, and I was, like you're up like it's time to get up so I woke up and um took Boo Radley out can you believe it I got up at five after eight this morning I know <laughs> um so I took little Boo Radley out and I gave him his medicine and then I um made I, I, made, I made a cup of coffee even though I haven't really been drinking a bunch of cup or a bunch of coffee or caffeine in the morning but this morning I was kind of craving it Alex was still sleeping because he wasn't going to leave for work until like 9.30. So, oh, I changed the laundry because I had been doing towels. So, I have been cleaning tons of towels down there. And um, so, I folded some and then I put the other ones in the dryer. and put another load in the wash. And then, um, and I have to go down there and fold that last, um, last uh, round of towels that are in the dryer. I kind of like doing wash. Do you guys, I, I enjoy it. Do you guys like it? <laughs> Um, which is probably why I'm constantly doing wash, but I like doing wash. Anyway, um, and I even don't mind folding stuff. So anyway, did that. Then I brought out all my meditation books out here with my cup of coffee and read my meditations for today. Did my prayers, my meditations, my gratitudes and all that kind of stuff. And, um, just felt really good this morning. Uh, really, really good. And by then, like Alex, by the t time that I was had done all that and was done reading my meditation books and stuff, he was um, leaving for work. So he said goodbye and um, then he left. And then, oh, no, 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 no. I had gotten done with my meditation books and I was sitting out here and I was actually reading for fun. And I was reading the manga book, Fangirl, the second um, edition, well, not second edition, but the second part to it. I got to like page... 67 or 68 on that today so sat out here and read for like a half an hour which was one of my goals for september and then i was like okay well now that alex is gone i'm going to film some videos so i went inside and i filmed um, my peterisms video which was a meditation but i also talked about something that i'm going to talk about on here in a second and then i um filmed my drama video which was kind of a rant video and i did it sitting over there and then I started uploading those. So on my Peterisms video, I made this announcement today, and I'm gonna, I made it on my drama video, I'll make it over here, that, um, you know, I did this video the other day on my Peter Bond channel talking about my sobriety um, and recovery from addiction, and it was just like focused on that. And I got just such a great feedback on it. And very rarely do I do dedicated videos just about addiction and recovery. Um, I mean, I talk about it, like, on here. You guys know I share so many stories over here. And um, and that's going to continue. It's not going to stop. Um, I mean, my vlog isn't going to change in any way how it's been. Um, but 
I got done with that video and I really felt compelled to like have a place where I was doing dedicated videos just talking about sobriety. And um, I was like, I really enjoy this and it's something that I talk about so much of my day with other people that like, I wish I had a place where I could just, whenever I want to, two times a week or whatever, you know, make dedicated videos talking about all kinds of things to do with recovery that maybe based on questions that I get from people, you know, about like blacking out or versus passing out and what's the difference or, you know, like I used this example in my video earlier, but like uh, when I was planning my wedding, was I concerned about like if we were going to have alcohol at the wedding or like a champagne toast? And because that was kind of a huge deal, you know, when we were planning our wedding um, that I was concerned with because I had certain feelings about that always, you know, about if I ever get married, then dot, dot, dot. And um, there were other things, you know, that a lot of questions, like people ask me lots of questions like, well, I, my sister or my brother or my husband or whatever is trying to get sober and what's the best way to help them? And so I could, there are so many videos that I could do, right? And so I've made the decision that I am going to not start a seventh channel, no, <laughs> that I'm going to include those on my Peterisms channel. And then I'm going to continue to regularly, if not daily, post um, meditations over there and read from the Melody Beatty books and the Linda Pecum books and all the other books. But on top of that, I'm also going to, like, so some days I might post two videos. So I'm also going to post recovery videos as well, where I'm talking about recovery issues and um, just th seen through my eyes, just my experience of this, you know, my idea of what I see and what I live on a regular basis, not, not the end all of what it is, but just my experience, if that makes sense. And, um, and share that on that channel. And anybody that wants to watch can, and those that don't want to, don't have to. And that I'm not going to um, make it like the whole part of the channel. So obviously I'm still gonna keep the meditation. So those that like to just watch the meditation videos but aren't interested in hearing anything about recovery, they don't have to. Like they can just watch the meditation videos, right? And I'll make it clear on the titles and things like that, which videos are different, you know? Because I know sometimes that, like, my Peterisms videos, the titles are ambiguous. Like, I'll say, like, I'm not okay or whatever, you know. Um, so I'll make it clear that it's a recovery-based video. I mean, I'll come right out and just be like, what is a blackout or blackouts versus passing out or something like that. So people will know that it's, a, you know, a video about recovery or addiction. So I'm extremely excited about that. That was something that last night Alex and I were laying in bed and we were kind of talking about different things that we want to do moving forward. And I kind of was like spinning up that idea. And he was like, I think you should do it if that's something that you're really excited about. And I was like, yeah, I think I am going to do that. So got that stuff done today, made that, those videos and was uploading those videos. And <clears throat> then um, Alex had fed Boo Radley some of this food and it was this... Old, he was like, let's try these packages to see if he still likes these packages that we had gotten him before. And I went down to his house and he had covered it up with his blanket, which I don't know if it's the smell and that's why he does it or if he just doesn't want to look at it. But it's almost kind of funny. It's almost like going out to dinner with somebody when they take their napkin and they cover their food up with their napkin like they can't be bothered with it anymore or something. Um, it's so funny when he does it. So I took the food away. He had a whole plate of it. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to make you eat this food. So I threw the, that food away. And I got him some of that royal canine that I just ordered some more of it. And... Um, that he seems to love, and I put it on the plate. I mean, he ate it up like that. He was so into it. I took a picture for Alex, and I said to Alex, well, it doesn't matter, but I said, um, so I, Boo covered up the food that you gave him, so I gave him some of the royal canine or the other food that we just got, and he ate it right up, so I think we know now which food he likes. So Alex is going to, because now we have like three different kinds of food or three other kinds of food that like Boo has only tried like once or twice and he doesn't really like. So we're going to like bag all that stuff up and Alex is going to give it to Melissa to donate to um, the food shelter for dogs. Um, so at least that won't go to waste. But I'm happy that we found something that he likes, you know, at least for a while. Hopefully it'll last. Um... Then I took a shower and got ready, and then Caroline came and picked me up. 
was very nervous about my doctor's appointment today because I didn't know what this neurosurgeon was going to say. Um, and so Caroline and I went out to brunch. We went to this place called Yoke here in Indianapolis. It's at the Iron Works. And I have this thing. <clears throat> so we were walking up to our booth. Because I was like, do you guys have a booth that we can sit in? They're like, yeah, sure. So we were walking up to the booth. And this guy that was sitting like right behind us, this older gentleman and his wife, they, um, hi. They, um, or he was having what looked like some kind of like egg scramble with like hash browns. It looks so good. And so, um, when our server came, I asked him, I said, what does he have back there? And it was like called like the El Torello something, something, but it had chorizo in it. And so I said, can I just get that with no chorizo? And he said, oh yeah. But the guy behind me, so this place has like hash brown something. I don't know what it's called. But I ended up getting just like the potatoes, even though I wanted the hash browns. I ordered like the wrong thing, but they were still delicious. I got a Dr. Pepper, which is, I'd already had the cup of coffee, so I wasn't really thirsty for coffee, so I got a Dr. Pepper. Caroline got a Diet Coke. She got a cheese, she got a brisket burger with fries, and um, she loves a good cheeseburger. And so, <coughs> we're going to their house for Labor Day. Alex, myself, Alex's mom, we're going over there. And she's having um, her stepson and his wife over. And then um, her, I don't know that would be her um, nephew-in-law is coming over there too. So that'll be really fun on Monday. They're just doing like a cookout and stuff like that. We have to bring a side. Caroline's like, what side are you going to bring? I said, I don't know yet. She goes, well, can you let me know? And I go, you just said bring a side. So does that really matter? And I go, potato salad. I'll bring potato salad. I go, it's not like I'm going to make it homemade anyway. I'm going to go get it from the Meyer or the Kroger or Walmart or somewhere anyway like that. <clears throat> so anyway, she was like, well, just let me know what you're bringing because I'm going to have other people bring like pasta salad and coleslaw and stuff like that. I said, okay. So <clears throat> she picked me up. We went to Yolk. She had the cheeseburger. She said it was horrible. She said it wasn't good at all. And But her fries were fine. And then I said, better than McDonald's fries. And she just looked at me like I was crazy because she loves McDonald's fries. So we ate there for a little bit, sat there for like an hour and ate, and we got done early. I actually, um, I had to be at my doctor's appointment at 1.45, and we got out of there at like 1 o'clock. So her son is training at a new job really close by, so we stopped by there. I was actually talking to Tanya on the phone um, about some stuff, and so, because uh, Caroline was like, just take the call and whatever, so when Tanya called me. So I was talking to Tanya. And then Caroline went inside to go see David um, when we pulled up to this place. And I just stayed in the car and talked to Tanya. And then when she got out, I was done with that. So Caroline and I talked a little bit more about stuff. And then she took me to my neurosurgery appointment. I was very nervous by this point. I didn't know. I didn't know if he was going to recommend this procedure um, based on a subdural hematoma. I didn't know what was going to happen as a result of this. And so... Because um, this was, my neurologist really wanted me to see him and see him, like, in person and say, like, okay, like, this is, so. So I saw this guy. He's, fan he's like, one of the leading specialists, like, neurosurgeons in Indianapolis. And it's really strange because, um, so we have a friend of ours that's in the field. And Alex happened to be talking to him last night. And he was like, oh, yeah, I, I know him and in the group. And they're fantastic and everything. And, um... So, guy, the doctor was so nice. So unbelievable. And then Alex met me there. The doctor was so incredibly nice. The people that worked there were so incredibly nice. I have to tell you, this was really strange about this doctor's appointment. I've, it's been a long time since this has happened to me, and I've been going to a lot of doctor's appointments. So they told me to get there like a half an hour early, and then they said you will only be given a half an hour because they try to keep someone's schedule. So I literally showed up right at 1.45, and my appointment was at 2.15, and I sat down. They called us back at 2 o'clock, like 15 minutes early, and then right at like 2.15, I looked at the clock, and I said, I said something, or maybe it was like just a few minutes after, I said, Alex, I go, like, I, how long have we been sitting here, or something like that, because we've come back a little bit early, right? And like the door opened, and he came in, and he had like these two to like teaching students with him that, he was like, I have these two students with me, do you care if they come in? And I said, oh, no, not at all. And um, he was so nice. So we just kind of like went through the whole thing and everything that had happened with my head and the subdural hematoma and the CAT scans. And he was like, 
I'm gonna be honest with you, he was like, I think things look great. He was like, things are progressing the way that we would want them to. And he went through the three different ways that you deal with a subdural hematoma. The one being put the, the burr holes in your head through like a form of surgery. And he said with that, there are two things that they do because one, the blood just, the fluid just comes out. And the second way is that like the blood is clotted in your head, which he said there's never been any sign of that with my CAT scans. So that's nothing to be worried at. You have to put a bigger hole um, in your head to remove the clotting. The second way is through the catheter procedure that was recommended to me that then he said there was no reason why that should have ever been recommended to you. And um, the third way is that you just keep on watching it and that eventually it'll go away. And I said, well, what if it doesn't go away? And he goes, you just live with it. You're living with it now. And he said, and each time it's going down. And I said, so there's a fracture in my brain. And he said, eventually what we hope for is that we just see the fracture and just a little bit of the fluid or, or none at all. He goes, but there's a very good reality that you might live with some of it on your head for the rest of your life. And I said, you're okay with that? He goes, oh yeah, I mean, he was like, that's good prognosis for a patient in your condition. And, you know, he was like, you have literally no signs or symptoms. And he said, I know your neurologist is very nervous about this. He said, he's very traditional. He's very con uh, conservative, which my doctor told me that. And he said, so he has you being having CAT scans done every uh, month. I have another one next week. He said, I, he has you doing CAT scans every month. He goes, and seeing him every month, he goes, Peter, honestly, if it were me, I'd see you every three to six months and I'd have you do CAT scans every three to six months. He goes, I don't think it's necessary. He goes, but if he makes you, if that's what he wants you to do because he wants to stay so on top of it, he goes, I I'm going to, you know, obviously he goes, I work with him so closely because they've been like talking together so closely through all this. He goes, I'm going to, you know, tell you to follow what his recommendation is as far as the CAT scans. He goes, it can't hurt you. He goes, it's just, we're not going to be able to see a lot of like change or progress within a month. He was like, you know, but three months you, you can see a lot. He was like, so like your scans from like March. So if you guys remember, there was like a scan where it like got worse and it got better. He was like, we wouldn't have even like really known. He didn't say it like this, but he said like, you know, we wouldn't have really known that on the scan because we would have just said that, seen that it was getting better. He was like, but sometimes when you watch it so closely, he was like, that's what happens. He was like, but he goes, I know he's really conservative. And he was like, I appreciate that. He goes, I just, I don't personally think it's necessary. And he goes, I think you're doing great. He goes, I think that your progress is everything that we would ask for in this situation I was like oh my god I'm so relieved Alex Alex asked um, a couple questions and then I was so nervous I was like so you know like he doesn't want me traveling or flying in a plane and he was like why and I was like based on the subdural hematoma and the pressure and whatever and he said I have no issue with you flying in a plane he said that would he goes, I understand his thinking around that. He said, but you'd literally be one of the first cases that I've ever seen where that affected your the subdural hematoma. He was like, you're in a pressurized can, uh, cabin. He was like, yeah, you can fly. He was like, are you... <laughs> he just kind of looked at me and he goes, are you already scheduling your trip? I go, yeah, kind of. <laughs> so, but he was really, really nice. And he goes, now I'm not... He goes, I, I would tell you to check that out with, you know, the doctor and whatever. And um, who he works really, really closely with. He was like, just check it out with him he goes but you can tell him that I gave you the go ahead and I'm gonna call him and let him know you know that everything that I said he goes but as far as I'm concerned he goes yeah you can travel and um and he goes and I'm not gonna set up a follow-up appointment with you and you know if you want me to read the next cat scan I will I can do that for you over the phone he goes but just why don't you know like in three months check in with me and set up another appointment and just call back then he goes I can get you in like within the week and then you can come back and he's like I just like to see you maybe quarterly at this point unless your neurologist wants me to see you more than that he was like but I, I don't have a reason to think that you need to come in more than that and I said so let me just make this clear. Like, our plan is, and he goes, our plan is that it's just going to go away on its own. And I said, okay, but, like, how long could that take? And he said, well, he said, you know, what happened was that you had a fracture initially, um, you know, and then after that, like, we didn't, there was no bleeding, you know, uh, uh, right away. And then what happened was that little blood started coming in with this other fluid, <laughs> 
And he was like, and it just, and so it, it really hasn't left, but it started to go down like month by month. And he was like, so I don't know. He was like, you know, there's no real time. We're just going to watch it and see what happens. He was like, but I'm not, he goes, I don't watch the CAT scan. This was interesting. He goes, I don't watch the CAT scan. I watch the patient. And he said, if the patient is doing well and there's no signs or symptoms, then I'm not concerned about what necessarily, he goes, unless it's like, you know, horrible what the CAT scan is showing. He goes, but your CAT scan is consistent with, you know, like good progress. So he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm very hopeful about the outcome. And he said, I think you shouldn't be really that concerned about it, that worried about it. He said, this is, he goes, the other thing is, and I liked it he said this he goes you're really relatively young he goes if you were 80 he goes i would be really concerned about this this would not probably heal on its own he goes but you're 50 he said this is going to heal on its own in the next year if not sooner and he said you know there's going to be down years down the road where you're going to say to yourself like oh remember when i had that subdural hematoma he said it's not going to be something that you're going to live with for the rest of your life and i was like okay he was a super super nice guy really really genuine and down to earth and um so and just i don't know like i i really really liked him so anyway um <clears throat> So yeah, so that's that, and um, came home, was very excited about that news, and came home, and um, sat on the front porch, called Caroline and talked to her, and... Um, Then I called Tanya. Tanya actually called me while I was sleeping because I, I'm trying to like think through what I did like when I got home. Not much, honestly. I called Caroline and talked to her. She's gonna take me to my CAT scan next week. Um, oh, that's what, so my CAT scan was like really early in the morning. <laughs> it was like at nine. And so Caroline's like, I can bring you, but like you're gonna have to Uber home. And she's like, why don't you see if they can change it to later in the day? And I was like, okay. So I called, changed the CAT scan to later in the day. So. Caroline's gonna pick me up and take me back um, from that, and then we're gonna maybe have a pool day after that. And then, um, so yeah, um, and then I called Tanya, and Tanya did not answer. I think she was working at the kennel this afternoon. She actually called when I was asleep. I just said that, right? So I'm gonna call her here when I get done vlogging. And um, and then that's when I went upstairs and I was like, I'll just put these videos up later. And then I completely, totally forgot about it <laughs> until I woke up. I was like, oh my God. So now Alex is at Pitbull. He rode up there um, with somebody that he works with that lives close or that he works with this woman and her, her husband, he doesn't work with her husband, but he works with this woman and she lives really close to us. So he went over to their house and they're riding up to, it's at Deer Creek, which if you're old like me in Indianapolis, we call it Deer Creek. It's now like Klipsch or Ruoff or I don't know, they've changed the name of this place so many times, but it's out in the middle of nowhere. It's this big place. And, and then he's like, I said, meeting Carlos and Liliana and some of their friends and, um, and like a bunch of people that Alex works with are going to this too. <laughs> So he's super excited about it. He's going to have a blast. I'm going to have a very relaxing evening watching TV shows and maybe reading a little bit and eating my two leftover slices of pizza, which I can't wait to eat. So it's going to be a good night. Be Radley and I are going to watch maybe a little movie or a little TV show or something, but it's going to be a good night. I'm excited for it. It's beautiful outside. When I got home from the doctor's appointment, I told Alex, I said, I think I'm gonna go up to the pool for a little bit. And he was like, yeah, he was like, do you want me to come up there with you? I was like, no, you don't, you know, if you want to. And then I laid down in bed and he was like relaxing and I turned on the fan and I was like, it's kind of hot. And he was like, yeah, I'm like trying to cool off before I get in the shower. And then I was just like, oh, I don't really feel like, I was kind of like, should I take a, sh I think I even said to Boo Radley, I said, Boo Radley, should I go for a swim? Or should I just lay down here and take a nap? And I was like, almost so half asleep that that's when I set, reached over and set my alarm. But anyway, I did have a nice little nap. It was nice little nap, long, deep nap is what I had. And, um, but it was good. And I do feel a little bit more woken up now. So I'm kind of, I almost brought a Diet Coke out here. I'm kind of craving a Diet Coke. It's interesting that I said that <clears throat> or I've been saying that I haven't been drinking that much caffeine and then this morning I woke up and I was like, I made a cup of coffee in the Keurig 
and now I'm craving a Diet Coke, which is like not really the case typically. And I had a Dr. Pepper earlier too, which is not typically the case ever. You know, typically I'm like, oh God, I don't really want a whole lot of caffeine or, or whatever. It stopped. But um, today is maybe <laughs> the difference. Today is the difference. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Today's a different day. I ordered one of those. Did I tell you guys that I ordered one of those like knee pads for gardening so that I can weed my walkway and I don't have to be like kne kneeling on like, <laughs> um, what do you call it, on concrete? Today, I wore pants. I had, I don't remember who I was with. I think Caroline or Sarah or somebody. But at Macy's, I had bought two new pairs of jeans for this fall. Buffalo, because I love the brand Buffalo. They have stretchy waist. Why wouldn't you love a pair of jeans that has stretchy waist? So I bought these Buffalo pants. But, oh, Buffalo, two pairs of jeans. But then I also bought a pair of Buffalo pants. And they're kind of like, I don't really know how, they're almost... Well, no, they're like a lighter version of this, but they're kind of like an off blue a little bit, and I really like them. Um, and so I wore them to my doctor's appointment today with this little polo shirt. <laughs> that look so nice, but I did wear the hat too. Um, and uh, it's so funny, whenever I go into doctor's offices, people always tell me like so that I smell good. And I had Louis Vuitton Meteor on today, which is what I typically wear when I go to doctor's offices. And I purposely wore it today because I was going to a doctor's office. And whenever I wear it to a doctor's office, they always say, ooh, you smell so good, what do you have on? So this woman took me back to get my blood pressure and weight um, done. And she goes, you smell so good, what is that? Oh, by the way, I was talking to her about my blood pressure and, um, she was like, your blood pressure is perfect. And I said, okay, thanks. And so she said, it says here that you have, because I put on my sheets, my because I had to fill out all of these sheets. And I, it said that, I, she said, it says here that you have high, high blood pressure. And I said, well, when I was in the hospital, they found that I had high blood pressure. I said, but every time that I've taken my blood pressure in the last, let's say, two months, I said, it's been normal. And I said, I'm on lisinopril. And I said, you know, like, I used to feel like really lightheaded. Like I would stand up. Do you guys remember me talking about it? Like it was bad. Like I would stand up and I would feel like really lightheaded from it. I don't feel like that anymore. Maybe it's because it's working. I don't know. Um, and maybe it's regulated my blood pressure. I don't know. I'm going to talk to my family physician about it. Um, but who I don't see for four months. So I'm going to have to schedule something <laughs> just specifically for this, which is fine. But I said... You know, I don't even know if I need to be on this medication anymore. And she was like, well, that would be something that you would ask your doctor. She was like, because you don't want to, like, bottom out. And she was like, that's one of the things that we get concerned with, with people that, like, they don't have high blood pressure and they're on high blood pressure medication is it can make you, like, bottom out. I don't feel like that anymore. Um, I don't really ever feel like my blood pressure is bad or good. I just feel like it's just whatever, you know? Um... I also think that I, like, lost that, you know, initial 30 to 40 pounds, and I've kind of fluctuated between there um, and haven't put any of it really back on yet. Hey, how are you? Okay, how are you? Good. And, um, I mean, I'll, like, put on three pounds, lose three pounds. That's, I've kind of, like, fluctuated. But I haven't, like, gone all the way back to where I was before. I don't know, maybe that's part of it. I mean, my doctor still wants me to lose a lot of weight and I just haven't. Um, that was one of my goals in September too, was to start eating healthier and we'll see when that starts. But um, I have been trying to drink a lot more water lately. And like I said, I've been drinking a lot of tea at night and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, and um, that's been about my day a good day it was a really good day I was telling Caroline like I said the problem with getting up she was like don't you love getting up so early because she because she was like oh I got up at 6 30 today I was like what the hell did you get up for 6 6 34 she was like well I had things to do I had this to do and I had that to do so anyway I said no I would not love getting up at 6 30 and um and I said and I it's nice every once in a while to get up at eight o'clock but in all truth like if I was just sitting here, if I wasn't, like, going and running errands or having doctor's appointments or whatever, I wasn't away from the house. Let's just say if I got up at 8 o'clock here and filmed my 
videos by noon because I could have had four or five videos done by noon, right? Oh, you guys were like, that's great, right? True, it is. But then what would happen is by noon, I started getting tired. When we left lunch or brunch at one o'clock, I was like so tired. I was like, um, I'm ready for a nap. Like that was before my doctor's appointment either, even, right? And Caroline said, she goes, yeah, she goes, I'll probably go home and take a nap because she goes, I'm a little tired. She's like, I'll just, but like a nap is different for her than it is for me. Like a nap for her is like laying on the couch with a TV show in the background. And she just kind of, all oh, these like geese all over the place. But, um, it's a wild goose chase in here. But, um, you know, she will just like lay on the couch and, um, she'll lay on the couch and she'll like, you know, watch some TV show in the background. And if she falls asleep, she falls asleep and she'll just watch the show over, watch the show over. But to me, like when I like nap, like that's like I did tonight. Like I set an alarm and I fall, I allow myself to fall asleep, right? <laughs> allow myself. So there's a difference, you know, it's not just falling asleep for 30 minutes. It's like I fall asleep, fall asleep. Like I fall into like deep rim sleep. And, you know, I told her, I said, I'm just so tired by the middle of the afternoon that, like, if I got up every day by 8, or at 8, then by, like, 2 o'clock, I'd be ready for a full nap. I'd be ready for the day to be over, you know? Um, and that's kind of the problem, because then if you do anything at night, like, how do you... I don't know, like, my, my husband doesn't really sleep a whole lot when you think about it. Like, he lays in bed sometimes. Like, he'll go up to bed. Well, he used to go to bed at, like, 10, and then he would be, like, phoned down asleep by 11. But now with, like, TikToks and playing his game and all looking on Instagram and everything else, I mean, he, like, and he'll, he can do that right up until the moment that he goes to sleep and then plug in his phone and he falls asleep like that. He says it's not true, but it is 100% true. Um, like, he isn't, like, distracted by all of that cyber stuff. Like, I couldn't do that. I'm too distracted by all that cyber stuff. So... You know, but he'll go lay up, he'll lay down at like 11 o'clock or, you know, he, he's been laying down later too because we'll watch TV or something, but like, you know, 11, 12, and then he'll lay there till like 1 or 2, and then he gets up at like 7.30 or 8 in the morning, and I'm like, you're really not getting that much sleep at all. And he doesn't nap. Alex is not a believer in napping. He thinks, if he, he's like, if I nap, I'm just going <clears> to, <throat> he goes, if I nap, I'm just going to go to sleep for the evening. And I'm like, okay, why? That doesn't, you don't have to. Nobody's forcing you to. He's like, I know, but like if I nap and I fall asleep, I'm just going to want to sleep for the night. Like I'm not, and, and back in the day, like, like, let's say if we would go out on like a Friday and a Saturday night and he was like super tired, like on that Sunday, we would like go to brunch or something or go eat lunch somewhere. And then he would come home. But usually back then, that was before we were doing pad shoe. I don't really remember when we started pad shoe We were actually talking about this the other day. And I said something about brunch. And he goes, we didn't do brunch when we first started, like, dating, like, those first couple years. And I said, what did we do on Sundays? And I can't remember what he said, but I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> and it obviously, like, meant so much that I remember it. But we went, we ate places, you know, but we would eat at, like, five or something like that on a Sunday. And we would come home. And I can remember, like, Ale or we would get pizza a lot on Sunday afternoons and watch, like, a movie or something. And I can remember that, like, Alex would just, like, at 6 o'clock or 7, he would go upstairs and, like, he wouldn't even purposely say, like, okay, I'm going to bed or anything like that. He would just fall asleep. And then, like, I would come up, like, it, it was all, it was typically when it was like six or six thirty, I would come up at like eight thirty or nine and he would still be sleeping. And I'd be like, babe, are you going to get up for the night? Or are you just going to sleep through until you have to get up tomorrow morning? And he'd be like half asleep and he'd be like, I'm just going to sleep through. And I'd be like, okay. And he didn't do that all the time, but he did that. I'd say like maybe like once every six weeks or something. He still doesn't sleep a lot, you know? And, um, I think he kind of like gets his rest on the, the weekends and stuff when he lays in bed and watches TV shows. But he's never really been a napper. Every once in a blue moon, he'll nap. Um, we just did something not too long ago, and he slept for like an hour before we went. I can't remember what it was. And he was like, I'm going to lay down for an hour before we... What was it that we just went to? I, I don't even remember, but it was something that we went to in the evening, and he was so tired and he was like I'm and he got home from work or got got home from doing something we got home from doing something and he was like yeah I'm just gonna lay down for an hour 
or I went upstairs and he was asleep and I was like, are you napping? And he was like, yeah, I'm going to lay down for an hour and then I'm going to take a, then I'm going to take a shower. I don't remember what that was, but that was just not too long ago. Um, so anyway, we're the house divided by napping. I love napping. I get a, get a lot, a lot of sleep in my naps. But I do think that my naps contribute to me like having a hard time falling asleep. I'm not, I mean, I'm not stupid. I do know that, right? But like getting up earlier with my nap, like this is the thing, like sleeping and then getting up at like, what is it? Like I got up at like six something, some, you know, I got up at almost seven. Like by like midnight or one, like I'll be ready to go to bed. But like napping later, like you guys know when I like lay down at like 10 o'clock, I call that napping, but I know most people don't. I get it, okay? But like that, like that is not conducive to me, like then turning around and going to bed after two TV shows. Because then I'm up, right? And then I'm like, okay, I'm rested and I'm up. So, but today was a very normal day in the, in the life of Peter Mon. Today was the way that people say, you should get up early and you should do this and you should do that. And I did all of it today. I lived a very normal existence today. <laughs> and it was a good day. And it was a good day. It was a really good day. And I feel very productive today. So, September has been good so far. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to get off here now, and um, I'm going to call Tanya Jean, and then I'm going to eat my two pieces of pizza, um, and I'm going to feed little Boo Radley. For the, we've been feeding him twice a day now, too, to maybe, like, uh, pull a little weight on his bones. The, the vet said he doesn't need to, but he's so skinny, the little guy. And um, so we've been feeding him twice a day, that royal canine, and he just eats it right up. He loves it. So, I mean, the packages are really small. Anyway, thank you for hanging out on the patio with me tonight. I have really appreciated it and had fun. This has been a good time. And I hope that you guys are having a magically... It feels like... I was going to say it feels like a Friday. And it finally is a Friday. It finally feels like the day that it is. But anyway, I hope that you guys are having a magically amazing Friday. If nobody else has told you this today, I love you. Remember these three very important things. One, you can start your day over whenever you want. Two, practice random acts of kindness. But shh. Don't tell anyone. And three, most important, um, I almost forgot. Reach out to somebody and let them know how much they mean to you. It was so important that I almost forgot. Three and most important, yeah, three most important, make sure to reach out to somebody and let them know how much they mean to you because you might just be changing their day. You don't know that reaching out to somebody, you know, they just might not hear from anybody throughout their day. So let them know. And um, like I said, again, thanks for hanging out with me on the porch. It was fun. And I love you guys so much. And I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya. And for those that need to hear it and those that want to hear it and those that just happen to stick around, one more I love you. I love you guys and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Love ya. Happy birthday, Lena.